Hey guys, how's it going? This is Karstoffelis and in this video I'm gonna go over the display settings I use on a daily basis when having the 48 inch LG C1 as my primary display device. These settings may not be perfect and are definitely not for everyone, but they work for me and hey, maybe they'll work for you as well. So let's get started. So let's start from the actual TV picture settings. As I don't use the TV as it's originally intended and rather solely use it as a PC monitor, then I almost exclusively use the Game Optimizer profile with the aspect ratio settings set as original or 16x9. I haven't really found any differences between them for PC usage. My OLED pixel brightness settings are managed by the Energy Savings AI which detects the surrounding light around the TV and adjusts the brightness of the panel accordingly. This is a very controversial approach and will not be suitable for every scenario, so let me explain. In my dimly lit room, the TV seems to do a really good job at detecting the surrounding light and as I do not do much color accurate work professionally, it works just fine for me. Just for some context, I have always preferred dimmer displays over very bright ones as I've found them to strain my eyes to a lesser degree over prolonged usage. With the previous Asus XG35VQ ultrawide monitor I used, I kept switching the brightness presets between just 100 and 140 nits, so that might make more sense to you in a more measurable way. This automatic brightness adjustment keeps the panel, for me, very well lit for my liking and also helps with preventing the dreaded burn-in in the long run. I hope. When it comes to HDR gaming though, it makes more sense to turn the energy saving step completely off and keep the OLED pixel brightness at 100 for the duration of your gameplay in order to get the full enjoyment out of your beautiful OLED display. Should you not turn the energy saving step off though, you would still benefit from the HDR, but the effect would be much, much less dramatic. So pick your poison. The rest of the settings I use are as follows. Contrast at 85, screen brightness at 50. Both are also the default values for the profile and work just great for me. Gamma I keep at 2.2 as that's what the PC monitors classically have had it at and what feels most comfortable for my eyes. I keep the black level at auto or full as I'm sending the full RGB range of color information to the display and the motion I care is set to off as I want as little image manipulation happening on the TV side as possible. Moving on to color menus, the color depth and tint are set to their respective defaults and in the white balance sub-menu I have changed the color temperature to warm 50 as it feels much more natural and also seems that the general consensus on the web agrees that this is the temperature to go for. When it comes to clarity settings menu, then in game optimizer picture mode you only get sharpness settings to play around with that I keep at zero as again if I want any post processing done on the image I would much rather prefer to do it on the source PC and not on the output display as that way the effect can be more sophisticated fine tuned. Take Radeon Image Sharpening for an example, which I almost use on every game I play. It uses Context Adaptive Sharpening algorithm under the hood and does not sharpen the already sharp edges of 3D objects. If I were to use the sharpness settings on the TV though, it would apply sharpening to the whole image, thus also sharpening the already sharp edges of 3D objects, which is not something that I'd really like to see. I'm going to skip the sound and AI settings, as it's really up to a personal taste what you set up there and how. Let's instead move on to game optimizer settings, which is obviously turned on. I leave the game genre on standard mode and have both black and white stabilizers at their default values of 10. Most of these settings remain at their defaults and I don't even see reason to set the input delay mode to boost as personally I cannot feel any real input lag on this panel at all. Now, the VRR and G-Sync settings need to be enabled in order to use Adaptive Sync on this panel and as I have an AMD GPU, I also enabled FreeSync Premium. Many people online have mentioned that it is not necessary to explicitly enable FreeSync Premium as VRR should already cover the Adaptive Sync as the HDMI industry standard. But that is incorrect when you connect a PC with an AMD GPU to this TV. Your drivers will not know that this panel is VRR capable and you have to enable FreeSync Premium in the TV settings in order to let your AMD drivers know that Adaptive Sync is an option when connected to that display. For Nvidia and Intel users, obviously there's no point in enabling FreeSync Premium. And then the last option in this menu would be for tweaking the dark areas in order to compensate for the raised gamma or raised blacks issue when using Adaptive Sync with varying refresh rates on the TV. 
I will be doing some testing with a few games soon enough to let you guys know how well it works and how bad the issue is in reality, so stay tuned and hit that subscribe button to hear first about it. But I can confirm already right now that the issue is still there with the C1 and this option is a patch rather than a fix for the underlying issue. So, moving on, the HDMI deep color setting has moved this year and well, you'd want to make sure that it's enabled when using the TV as your monitor. Now it's located under General, Devices, HDMI Settings, HDMI Deep Color. And finally, we arrive at the last Support Settings section on the TV. Software update is self-explanatory and I would recommend that this is the very first thing that you check for when you buy this set. Contrary to the popular consensus online, I keep the automatic updates turned on as I already have far too many devices around the house which require manual updates and intervention. I simply don't need another one. In the OLED screensaver menu, I keep the screen move turned on which shifts the whole picture by a few pixels around every now and then in order to make sure that objects like white text don't stress the very same pixels over a prolonged use of static content. It's mostly noticeable only when you look for it, so there is no reason not having it turned on. I also have the Adjust Logo Brightness setting set to High, which is supposed to dim out static logos found in the content you're watching. It does a very good job and although it manipulates the image in an unnatural way, it's not as aggressive to call it offensive. I most definitely would not dare doing any color accurate work with this feature turned on, but for everyday use, this is just fine and helps keep the dreaded burn in at bay for longer periods. And now, we finally arrived at the very last menu I wish to touch upon, the energy savings. Automatic power off I've set to 2 hours to avoid accidental misuse and then the energy saving step is set to auto. This is the setting you would want to keep disabled if you wish to have a static brightness output from your display. Again, this auto setting which uses the TV's light sensor in order to automatically treat the OLED pixel light setting works for me as I have a pretty good light control in my room and I generally like dimmer displays when working with computers. For you and probably for most of the population on planet earth, this setting is an outcast, a heretic, an abomination which should never be looked at, let alone enabled. And that's that's fine. For what it's worth though, when I don't use the energy saving step setting, I tend to keep the OLED pixel brightness at 40 for HDR content, which is a bit brighter than what I would usually get with the automatic sensor setting. And we made it! Those were my current settings on a 2021 LG C1 display when using it as a computer monitor. I didn't think that this would be such a long video and maybe I could have squeezed in my desktop workflows and settings as well. But I think that this video has already gone on long enough and I'll return to the workflows and PC settings in a separate dedicated video. Anyways, I would like to thank you very much for watching and hopefully you enjoyed it. Thank you again and I'll catch you guys later. Bye-bye.